Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we're going to make use of all of the things that we learned about forms in the two previous videos and use that knowledge to build out the front end of a form that is used for booking a holiday. In those previous videos we looked at the various input types and other elements that we'd commonly include in our forms and we can break these down into textual inputs and clickable inputs and some elements even are both of these. If you haven't seen those videos then please do check them out. The Links are in the description below, as are the links to the code that was used in each of those videos. We're on social media, so if you'd like to connect with us and chat with us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, then the links to those are in the description below. And if you like the content, please remember to smash the like button and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. The more engagement that the channel gets, then the more it can grow and the more other people can find it and make use of the content. Okay, so the form that we're going to build today, when we're finished with the form, it will look something like this. And if we add a CSS to the mix, it will look something like this. These are the exact same form. One is just the HTML, and we're going to work on the HTML in this video, and the other has some CSS applied to it. We're not going to work on the CSS in this video, and I'm not going to explain what the CSS does right now, because we're just working with HTML, but I will provide the CSS for you if you want it, and the link to that is below in the description. In a later video, we will work on the CSS for this form. Before we start coding, I'll just point out that the forms that we will make will be functional, as in that you'll be able to interact with them by clicking submit buttons and entering text and selecting options from drop down menus. But the data that we're going to enter into these forms doesn't go anywhere just at the moment. We display our forms with HTML and style them with CSS, but when we submit a form and send all request data, that happens on the back end with a programming language like PHP. Python, JavaScript with Node, or you know something like that. We're using a markup language, so data transfer is beyond the scope of HTML. So we can use HTML to display, CSS to style the form, but to process the form data, that is done by a programming language, and it is much too early on for us to discuss that just at the moment. So our forms will be just the user side or the front end of the form, and it's just about getting used to constructing forms in HTML at the moment, and everything else will come later on. There are services that you can use to handle form submission like Netlify, and I'll show you how to do that when we're ready to talk about the deployment of our sites. So we'll start by building out some of the input elements that our form will need, and we'll add client-side form validations while we're doing so. Client-side validations are all about applying some set of rules to parts of our forms. So for example, your password must be a minimum of eight characters, name and email addresses are required fields, and so on. This page at W3Schools shows us the attributes that we can add to the input element, some of which we're going to use while we build out our form. When we get to the JavaScript section, we'll be able to do much, much more with custom validations. We can still do a couple of things with just HTML though, and we'll look at those while we're building the form, as I've said. One of which is the required field validation. If we scroll down, we see that the required attribute specifies that an input field must be filled out before submitting the form. And it works with input types of text, search, URL, tell, email, password, date pickers, number, checkbox, radio, and file. This means that a given form input must be completed before it can be submitted. To do this is actually incredibly simple. We just add the keyword required to the input that we want to make a mandatory selection. So I'm going to make these username and email input types required. I'll start by adding a text input, an email input, and each of them will need labels. I'll actually nest the inputs inside the labels this time just to do things a little differently to how we've done them previously. So we need some form tags and then inside of the form I'll create some space and I'll use the shortcut of label, angled bracket and input. And this gives us a simple text input nested inside of a label. We don't need the four attributes in the label this time, so we'll delete that. And we don't need to add the ID to the input, as the association between the two elements, between the input and the label, is implicit due to the nesting. The form element also doesn't need the action attribute that Emmett builds it with, as we don't have a back end to send the form data to currently, so I will delete that as well. I'll give the input a placeholder of name. And I'll also add 
the required keyword that we were talking about. I'll also give it the autofocus attribute, which means that as soon as the user loads the form, this field will be focused and they can begin typing as soon as the page loads. I'll duplicate what I've just made and I will change text and name to email. I'll remove the autofocus as well. And to clear things up, I will add three comments. So we'll have one for the whole of the section and I will just call this details and then we will need a comment above each element so the first one will read name and the second one we'll put as email the last thing we need to do for this section is to group them within a field set and the field set will have a legend so over here on mdn we see that it says that we use a field set element to group several controls as well as labels within a form so going to our unstyled finished form, that represents this part of the form. This border separating each of the sections of the form. The legend provides a caption for the field set and that is this bit of text that is within the border of the field set. So we'll add the shortcut of field set angled bracket legend and inside the legend we'll write your details and before that we're going to need a number but this number is going to need to be styled in the styled version of the form. And for this, we can use a span, which is used to group inline elements in a document and provides no visual change by itself. So we can put some of our text inside a span and this will allow us to target just that bit that's inside the span uh, with some CSS. I have a video coming up on divs and span, so we will go into much more detail in that video as to what spans are and divs if you are unsure on how we use them and why we use them. But for now we'll just type span and hit tab and inside that we will add the number one. Now we just need to move our inputs and labels inside the field set, then we'll save and we have the first section done. Okay, our next two sections will also have field sets and labels, so I'm going to create both of these in advance for us to work inside of. So I'll write the image shortcut of, we'll have some parentheses, and then inside of the parentheses we'll put field set, angled bracket, legend, angled bracket, span, and outside of the parentheses we'll have multiplied by two. So we'll hit tab, and now we have two field sets to work inside of. Above the first, I'm going to add a comment of destination and departure. And above the second field set, I'm going to add the comment of feedback. So now we're good to start working inside the departure section in which we're going to need two date inputs and two drop down menus. First, we'll fill out the legend and add the number two in the span and outside of the span, the text of destination and departure. We'll start with the two date inputs and their labels. So we'll make use of Emmet as we always do and we will have parentheses again. And inside of that we will have label plus input multiplied by two with the multiplied by two outside of the parentheses. And we'll hit tab and I'll put a couple of cursors inside the two inputs and add an ID so we can bind each input to its label. I'll also need to change the input types to date. So then for both inputs, we're going to need to fill in the relevant details. So for the first input, we'll need to complete the four attribute in the label and the text between the label tags and the ID in the input. And we'll put all of these as departure. We'll repeat this process for the second input and label, and we'll put these as return. So if we save, we have the first part of the destination and departure section. Next, we need to look at the two drop-down menus for leaving from and going to. So looking at these, these are both labeled and these are select lists with four options each. So I'll add comments for where the select starts and where the dates are. Then we're going to need to put in a really, really, really long Emmet shortcut to build out the 11 or so lines of HTML that we're going to need. So we're going to have some parentheses and inside the first set of parentheses, we're going to have label to build us a label element. And then we will have curly braces with the text of leaving from and a colon and this will just give us the text inside or wrapped by the opening and closing label tags 
then we'll have plus select angled bracket option multiplied by four. So this is going to build a select element with four nested options. So that's the text inside the first parentheses. And then we'll add to that another label with the curly braces and the text this time will say going to and colon plus select angled bracket and again four options. So we will hit tab and we get our two select lists built out for us and we just need to fill in the relevant details. So for the first list, I'll do multiple cursors in the four ID and name and these will all be leaving. And it's the same process for the second list and instead of leaving, I will write destination. And we just need to fill out the options now. So we will need multiple cursors again. And for both lists, the first option and its value is London. The second option and value on both lists is Belfast. Then the third will be Edinburgh. And finally, we have Cardiff. Okay, so if we save now, we see that we can select from both drop downs and we can add departure and return dates. So that completes our second section. So we're making really good progress here. The last section that we need is a feedback or review section at the bottom of the form. And this will enable us to get some feedback from our customers or users. And again, we'll start with the pre-made field set that we made earlier. And in the legend, we'll add the number of three inside the span. And outside of the span, we'll have the text of feedback. So inside the field set, we'll have a select list again, some radio buttons, a text area, and a checkbox. And I'll add the comments for those. So we'll type select and then hit command and forward slash to comment it. And then we will have a comment for radio. So that's radio. And again, command or control if you're on Windows and forward slash. Then text area. And again, we'll comment. And a fourth comment for checkbox. Okay, so for select, we'll use emit again. And we'll write label, some curly braces. And inside of that is going to be the label text. So we'll put that as how did you hear about us? And then we'll plus select, angled bracket, and four options. The four ID and name will all be source, and the value and options will be Google. Then the second will be TV. Then we'll have newspaper. And the last one will be other. Next, I'll add the text area and the checkbox and I'll come back to the radio buttons after. So for the text area, we'll have label and some curly braces. The text will be any comments and a question mark. And then we'll add to that a text area. And that gives us this. We'll have the four ID and name as feedback and the columns and rows of the text area will be 40 and three respectively. For the checkbox, we use the Emmet shortcut of label plus input colon checkbox. We will lose the name and we'll have the for and ID as checkbox. In between the label tags, we'll have the text of join mailing list. So I'll save and after completing those two, I'll just add a BR element to drop the checkbox onto its own line. Next, we're going to go back and have a look at the radio buttons that we skipped past. And looking at the completed form, this is very similar to what we did in the last video, where we had three connected or bound radio buttons for three different or separate choices. So if you think you can do that, having seen the last video, then please pause the video here and have a go of that by yourself. And if not, there's no need to worry as I'm going to walk through it right now. So first, we'll have a P or paragraph element asking would you use this service again and then we'll have another image shortcut of some parentheses and inside those we will put label plus input colon r and outside the parentheses we'll multiply that by three we'll hit tab and it builds out these three radio buttons for us we'll select inside all of the name attributes and we'll put these as choose 
and this shared name will bind the three buttons together and make them operate as a radio group. So if we save at this point, though we have no label text and the rest of our attributes are empty, the shared name means that we can only select one option at a time. So selecting one will deselect another. Next we need to fill in the for and IDs to join the labels and inputs. And we also need to add the label text. So I'll select all of those using multiple cursors and I'll type radio yes. Then I'll change the second label and input to radio no and the third to radio maybe. Finally, we just need to add the label text for each button and this is going to be quite simple, just yes. The second will be no and of course, the third one will be maybe. So we'll save that again and we have our group of radio buttons nicely labeled and working as expected. While we're here, I'm just going to go over the form in the browser and I'm gonna click on all of the labels on the page. And if these are all linked correctly to their inputs, then clicking the label will actually focus the input field that is associated with the label. And all of these seem to be working just as we want them to, which is great. Okay, so we have our form pretty much finished and built out here. And the last thing is to go right to the bottom of the form and add our submit button. And again, this is an input element and it has a type of submit. If we use the Emmet shortcut of input submit, it builds us out this submit element. And all we need to do is add the value. And the value is the text which is going to appear on the button. I'll also add a comment above it so we know exactly what this is for. And lastly, we'll just add a BR element actually before the text area to create a little bit of space for our radio buttons as they're a little bit bunched up here. So there we go, our form is now complete. And the last thing to do is to test the form by entering some data. So I'll leave the name and email blank for now as I want to test the required attribute that we added earlier. I'll add in the dates and I'll go from London to Edinburgh as well. I'll say that I heard about it on TV and I would maybe use the service again and I'll join the mailing list. I'll add a quick comment in the text area and now let's click submit and we see that the form hasn't submitted. It's asking us to enter a username so okay I'll go and do that and I will put my name as Craig and we'll go and submit again and we now have a warning on the email field. So I'll just put domain.com in the email field and again we can't submit as we haven't entered a properly formatted email address. So I'll correct that and the form submits. The data doesn't go anywhere but the default behavior is displayed of returning the form to its blank state and moving the data out of the front end. Okay, so that was pretty tricky and we definitely have tested you. It's definitely the hardest thing that we've done so far and I hope it has served as a good exercise and that you're now more comfortable using forms. The final code for this is available as always in the description. So if you want to get a copy of that and maybe have a play around with it, modify it and use it to make some forms of your own, that would be a really handy exercise. The CSS is available also if you want this styled version instead of the plain markup version and I'll walk you through the CSS for this project when we're in the CSS section of videos. But for now, it's all about just concentrating on the markup and getting things displayed on the page with some nicely structured and clean HTML. So this concludes our work on forms and next time we see forms, we'll know exactly what to do and how to build them. We have a project coming up where we'll build a small static website for a restaurant and that will include a contact page possibly with a contact form. Before that, we're gonna take some time to look at divs and spans and we're going to look at semantic markup in HTML5. If you're finding the content useful, then hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, comment and share with others that you think might find it of use. You can get in touch with us if you have any questions and the email is down below somewhere and you can also connect with us on social media. We're on all of the main platforms and again, all of the links are down below. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next video.